Hello and welcome again. Today we consider two multiple choice questions to summarize some key areas of topic 16.1 for IB Chemistry HL. And here you have a typical question. This type of question, of course, could appear in paper 2 or it could also appear as, as it's done here in paper 1. There are some different ways that you see people solving this type of question. One way, of course, is to plug all of the data into some formula where you have rate 1 and rate 2 uh, for each reaction. But what I prefer to do, especially for the style of questions always given in the IB exams, is to consider it from an experimental perspective. And here you have the summary equation, of course, it's important to mention that everything is carried out at the same temperature, otherwise you would not have a valid experiment. Uh, a plus B both in the gas state to give C and D both in the gas state. And what you'll typically have is under column A here, you'll see that two values are the same. That is a sign that A is being controlled so that B is getting manipulated. So here you have your controlled variable and here you have your manipulated or your independent variable. And the independent variable is just a concentration of B which is doubled. The dependent variable would be the effect on the rate of the reaction. And in this particular case, you notice that the initial rate of the reaction has remained the same. What that suggests is that when you change B by increasing its concentration, it has no effect on the rate of the reaction. And when you have that situation, then you have a graph that looks something like this. And you have a rate expression that looks like this. And you have units of K that look like this. But the order of the reaction with respect to B would be a zero order reaction because all of those characteristics, the graph and the units and the rate law or the rate equation, all match a zero order reaction or one in which changing the concentration brings about no change in the rate of the reaction. But that's just half of the answer, because as you see, both B and C have zero as a choice. So it means we've got to go a little bit further. And nicely given here for us is B is controlled in this box and in this box. And what that allows for is some convenient data over on this side, where you see A is doubled from 3.0, 0 by 10 to the negative 1, the 6.00 by 10 to the negative 1, that is a doubling of its concentration. And then you notice over on the initial rate side that there is a quadrupling. You really don't need to get too distracted by the indices once they are the same. You could easily see that um, this which approximates to 1.9 and this which approximates to 7.6, it's a factor of 4 here and a factor of two here. So a doubling in a concentration results in a quadrupling. So there's that square relationship and that is indicative of a second order reaction. So the answer to this question is C. And having this question uh, to look at before you go into the IB exam is always a, a good way to review something that is likely to show up as a way of testing your understanding of topic 16.1. Now let's move to this second question. This one of course is highlighting the fact that you have a multi-step reaction and how do you get the rate law? How do you get the summary equation for the reaction? How do you determine what's a catalyst, what's an intermediate, what's a reactant and what's a product? Well one of the first facts that you must be familiar with is that the slow step in a multi-step reaction is the rate determining step and here you can see that step one 
is the slow step or the rate determining step and step one involves two NO2s interacting to produce NO and NO3 and then that NO3 here is an input in step two so at no point you see NO3 uh, either on the initial reactants or in the final products so that suggests that NO3 is an intermediate we can cancel them out here this NO3 with this NO3 uh, leaving an NO here which is not even connected to the second step so just that suggests that NO is is a is a product of the reaction and that two NO2s interact with CO to give us another NO2 and CO2 now if we get another NO2 what that suggests is that one of these two NO2s is behaving as a catalyst you detect a catalyst by seeing something going in in the first step and then seeing it coming back out in the final step as a product it means that it goes in there it gets involved in lowering the activation energy facilitating reactants to become products and then it reappears at the end of the reaction so one of the NO2s is a catalyst one NO2 is a reactant CO is a reactant a product is NO from this first step and another product is CO2 so with all of that information now let's look at the three statements we realize that um, statement one of course is correct because it does give us the overall reaction of course we figured out that one of these NO2s is actually working as a catalyst that does not need to appear in the overall reaction but it would need to appear in the rate law or the rate equation so number three here that says step one it's the rate determining step and for it you would have to say rate is equal to K1 multiplied by the concentration of NO2 squared so you have two NO2s interacting of course one is the catalyst and the catalyst does change the rate of a reaction by having it um, in not present and then in tiny amounts and then in increasing it incrementally would change the rate so as such it needs to be included in the rate law or the rate expression so number three is also correct and of course step one is the slow step and it's the rate determining step so the answer for this question is one two and three all correct answer D